Hey everybody, you are listening to the Flick Connection Podcast. This is Darren Van Dam, and I am sitting here with George Hardy. Uh, you know him from Troll 2, 1990. Uh, we're going to get into some of that fun stuff. Uh, he's got a new movie out, Texas Cotton. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you about that. I uh, had the privilege of getting to watch it early, so we're going to talk a little bit about that, but it's currently on a, a tour. We'll get into some of that, but before we uh, talk about the new movie, I want to talk a little bit about your experience with Troll 2 and sort of how that journey has sort of brought you all the way around, because... What I, what I will tell people that don't already know is you're you're not a you're you're not a Hollywood man. You're not an actor. You're you're a, a dentist yeah. Yeah, general by, dentist, by yeah. trade. So let, let's talk a little bit about first just how you even came to be in yeah. this this yeah. crazy movie that's famous for, again for people that don't already know about right, it. Right. It's famously one of the best <laughs> worst movies ever made is how it's typically put right. is that correct yes yeah. exactly right. so and I, I can talk a little bit more about it, that but let's talk about how you got to be in that that film right yeah you're right i mean uh the magic of troll too right i mean it's what 2018 now and the movie was made 30 years ago yeah pretty much started 30 years ago it was in 89 that we, we actually filmed it so we're coming up on 30 years for the big anniversary. <laughs> I was 34, now 64, you know, 30 years later when we, we shot it. And it was, of course, that was before the digital world and all that. And uh, we filmed it in Utah. And it just by happenstance, I'm, as, as you were early, earlier mentioning, I'm actually a practicing dentist in Alabama now, but I was at the time practicing in Salt Lake. And some of my friends uh, there in and tie, it pulled me into some acting classes. Okay. Back in 80, 88. And I took some lessons from a lady named Lillian Chauvin. And Lillian was an acting coach that would fly from LA up to Salt Lake. And we would do these different scenarios. And uh, I worked with a, a good friend of mine, Michelle Turner Wilson, who's still acting. She's a ski instructor at Salt Lake. She's a senior ski instructor now. But she, she really encouraged me to. Maybe get a, you know an agent and all that. She said, you got that look. You need to go try, do it. So I went out one day and uh, an audition came up and hit up in Park City, and I just on I just turned the right wheel to the right and heading up the canyon and went in an audition. And there were about eighty or ninety guys going for the dad, oh, wow. the, the dad for <laughs> control two. Went into a smoke filled room. I'll never forget and. There are probably nine Italians in there. No one spoke English, man, and no one smokes in Utah either. You know, it's the you know the the strong LDS state, <laughs> so it's the healthiest state I think in the United States. One of them. And uh, I went in that room. I couldn't even see the director, <laughs> and I cold read. And yeah. I get a phone call the next day, and they said, "You've got the lead dad part." Wow! In this film. I go, "You've got to be kidding!" Never done anything on film at all, and uh, I was. Did some other little things in high school, but nothing really. I was a college cheerleader, which was kind of fun, and I was in front of a lot of people then, and we did skits and all, but never really thing in front of the film. Yeah. And little did I know that thirty years later, it's remained as one of the you know worst films ever made in the history of all cinema. Yeah. <laughs> Next, there's a lot of arguments, which is the Holy Grail, the Room, that Manos, Hands of Fate, you know. Yeah, well, I'll so, say, I've, and I've seen all of them. I'll say, yeah, yeah. Manos is not really entertaining to watch. The Room it can be entertaining to watch as well, and then wow. Troll just has its own kind of fun thing. But the thing is, there's the thing about bad movies is there's so many movies that are there's so many movies that are terrible, but it's oh, wow. one of those movies that all the typical stuff is all the typical things that are criticized are awful. Yeah. It's got a zero percent, maybe still on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's six percent. Okay. At the time, it was zero when yeah. we made it. My dog is going to bark. It, 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 I don't think it'll interrupt too much. Okay. If it goes on for a while, we'll we'll stop it. But I think uh, okay, people sorry. can deal at home with hearing a little yeah, bit they of the know dog, dog bark. Um, Shut up! Shut up! And uh, but it's entertaining. It's fun to watch. It delivers. You and see the scene, right? that's why everybody still still loves it. So yeah. there, there's plenty of bad movies that are not worth watching, but this is one that's definitely worth watching. If you happen to be listening to this close to the time that it's released, it's currently available on Amazon Prime. I don't know oh, if you knew that. It is just, it? Yeah, it just, got uh, a, it just popped up recently. Um, we watched it Halloween night. 
Oh, that's I, but I've yeah. I've I've enjoyed it for years. Um, yeah, you know it's it's a lot of fun. But it's interesting because I did hear so I did hear that the uh, director and the creators were Italian and didn't speak English. Right, right. And mm-hmm. so that that is largely responsible, not solely responsible, but largely responsible for some of the issues in the movie. Because <laughs> I would imagine, like, if like when I watch a foreign film and I don't speak the language. I really can't tell if they're doing a good job <laughs> with the performance. So I'd imagine that's somewhat to blame for, for the problem. But what was that like working with, uh, uh, under the direction of somebody, one, having never done it before, but two, somebody that just didn't even, couldn't even really yeah. communicate with you? Well, I have to take up for Claudio and Rossell, especially Claudio now, because Claudio's English has really improved oh, okay. since <laughs> in the last 30 years. But And, and, and really, Rossell understands a lot more as well. Uh, we, we email each other, and she responds back in English. But uh, yeah, well, I'm sure there's some translation, but she she gets it. But Claudio's English is really good. But at the time, yeah, it was it was pretty. I think he was relying more on speaking to the other Italians that were there. There were probably ten Italians on set, and, uh, and they were corroborating and in Italian. And uh, there was so there wasn't a whole lot of there was really a loss of communication. Yeah, big time. Well, big. They just said, "Do it this way. Do it this way, no matter what." Well, in the movie, it, it came out, and it's my understanding that some people around, some local people, saw it before you even knew that it was out, or knew. Yeah, knew people were watching You're it. Right. <laughs> in Best Worst Movie, we said that. My brother-in-law, in fact, uh, Will, uh, he's a big tech guy. He called me and said, "George, your movie's out." And my sister and I go, "Oh my God, you're kidding." And that was about 91 or 2. So we filmed it in the summer of 89. Oh, okay. It's about three weeks shoot. 21 days shoot deal. I was in 13 of the 21 days. I remember getting paid $100 a day. I got paid $1,300. <laughs> Troll to, of course, non-sag. And didn't get anything after that. Yeah. But And I forgot about it. I mean, we had right. fun and we had a little after party. And really got to know and love Claudio Masella. And, of course, I got to know a lot, a lot of cast. There was about 13 main cast members. Really, seven strong ones, and of course, Mike and Stevens and I were the ones that, you know, brought. Of course, later, best was moved the documentary. But at the time, uh, you know, we just went on our own way and kind of forgot about it. Yeah, it's been three years. <laughs> three years, and, and yeah. you don't necessarily yeah. know what's happening with it. Meanwhile, I had left Salt Lake, moved back to Alabama, started a dental practice here, had an adopted four-year-old at the time. This is before my. My now 25 year old was born. I have a daughter that's uh, her half sister that's uh, 10 years younger. So, Lily wasn't even born yet, yeah. So, I remember when I watched it for the first time, I went, Oh my gosh, you know, it's like, oh. So, I, I put it, of course, it was VHS then. I just put it in the big VHS machine, and about the first five minutes, I went, Oh my gosh, I, I can't watch it. <laughs> I cannot watch it. Because at the time, all of us, as far as being non actors, were. We were so proud of the back, fact that we made it through to to film it. Yeah. And so when, you know, we were just, uh, yeah, we were, yeah. You're fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we, we were just all excited about, uh, you know, f- filming uh, and getting through with it and working mm-hmm. through it all. all yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it was really interesting to watch it for the first time. I remember then that was it. I. I let the let the VH copy seriously. I said the documentary of Best Worst Movie. I let it drop behind my big old fat TV back then. I didn't even care if I ever saw it again. I dropped the videotape. Did you not finish that, it? Never. Did not oh, watch wow. it. Did not watch it after that first scene because I was so embarrassed. It's like oh my god, I was so embarrassed by it. It it was behind my my television until seventeen years later. Wow, I didn't realize it was that long. Seventeen years. I wasn't the fact that it was behind the TV for 17 years, but I think it remained back. Well, there. it remained kind of off at it, off your radar, and something you didn't want to think about for yeah, that long. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. I guess, man, was that? So it's it's around 2005, 2006 Six, is when. Good memory. Okay, I get it. I get a phone call. So I had watched it back in '92 or three, and um, I had watched just a little bit of it. Yeah, in Utah. Before I moved back to Alabama, and no, 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 I had moved back here. That's right. I had already moved back here, and uh, 
Anyway, the bottom line is in 2006, after totally ignoring it, yeah, and not and, and staying completely away from the cast members. Yeah. I didn't. I you know, I didn't know what happened to even Michael Stevenson, who played my son. I had no idea where anybody was, and I was. I had dove completely in my dental practice. Then one day out of the blue, I get a phone call. It'd be like you kind of coming and interview me, and he was a kid. He was a guy from um, Furman University. He called me. 2006, and he says, he says, Dr. Hardy, this is so-and-so, and I'm doing a radio documentary on Troll 2. I said, why, why are you doing that? He <laughs> says, well, don't you know it's a world called phenomenon? This was in 2006. Yeah. This is pre-Facebook. This is pre-Instagram. It was MySpace back yeah. then. So he goes, this is a MySpace generation's uh, you know, Rocky Horror. I go, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. So I, um, I, he says, if you don't believe me, go to IMDb. Well, being new to it and not really jumping into film. I didn't even know what IMDb meant, Internet Movie Database. So I go in and go and hit the IMDb button and, and I'd see how to read it. Yeah. And uh, that was our first time about kind of learning about scrolling. So I start scrolling down. And I, um, it's late. I'm going to go to bed. I'm about to go to sleep. And I'm just scrolling down and scrolling down. And, then, and at the bottom it said comments about yeah about, it was forum what it was. And I'm just about to fall asleep. And at the very bottom of the page, and this is April the 11th, 2006, it says, Troll 2 cast reunion. Uh, first time Troll 2 ever shown on a big screen in America. And I went, oh my God. Yeah. All cast members, please, we're, we're trying to search this. Wow. Blair, Blair Starrett had the largest collection of vintage Really bad movies in the Intermountain West, and he lived in Salt Lake. And he, he, I ended up calling the number. He says, "Dial this number. I'll dial the eight hundred one number. There, the area code." Which but I the, that night before you went to sleep, yes, yeah, eleven thirty at night. I, I called Blair because it's Mountain Time. Got him. He says, "You got to come out for this. We're going to show it." I said, "You got to be kidding me." He says, "And I've got seven of the cast members coming." I said, "You got to be kidding me." More spent seven hundred and thirteen dollars. I remember. To fly out two days later. Half of which you got paid. Yeah, oh, I never thought about me. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, even back in 2006, I spent that much money on the, on, the, on the flight. Flew out to Salt Lake two days later. Got into the screening about 10 or 15 minutes late. Uh, and it was on April the 4th that they, no, April the 13th that they showed it. Beautiful spring day in Salt Lake. And the seasons there are fantastic. So it was a nice day. <laughs> go in, start watching it in the dark. I had no idea who was in the room or, or anything. Little did I know, the you know, Credence was behind me, the witch, and Darren Ewing, the guy. That, oh my God! That you know, if you know, if you know the movie, oh yeah, uh, and many of the listeners that do know Troll Two know every one of the characters that I know. It's be like all the Rocky Horror characters. Yeah, they're all sitting next to me with me. Not even, I think Grandpa Self was even there. He was. And anyway, it was amazing that I walked into the room, the lights came on, and before you know it, I'm being bombarded with autographs. And I was just, I was blown away. You've got to be kidding me. So uh, at that time, Michael Stevenson, who played my son, on screen son, he would, he would have been 11, and now he would now be 28. I was really, I wanted to meet Michael more than anybody because he was my, you know, yeah. to go from 11 to 28, you know, come yeah. on. and for me to, from 34 to 50, whatever. I said, uh, this is crazy, you know, uh, I'm going to jump on this and, and meet him. He wasn't there. So Deborah uh, Reed, the, the creative, says, hey, I, why don't we do a documentary around this thing? There really is a cult phenomenon. Most of the, I don't mean to talk so much, but just briefly I'll tell you, most of the Troll 2 fans all over the world knew, uh, knew where everybody was in Utah, but I was over here in Alabama, yeah. so I had no idea where anybody was. Yeah. So anyway, bottom line is Michael and I connected, and organically with family and friends and myself, we made a documentary called Best Worst Movie. Two years later, which took place in 27 uh, cities in eight countries, and that was filmed with over 500 hours of footage over about a two and a half year period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen, which won several yeah. awards. Yeah, and, and I've seen that, and that was a really yeah. good. It, it was. And, it and was the, yeah, vehicle that tells the story. It was cool to see you in it, but also for him to be able to make that film after kind of, you know, as a kid having been in this, sure. this movie, you know, I think that was really kind of a nice 
way for him to like wrap up that story. Well, know? what's true about Michael, he was a child actor. Yeah. He and his mother actually went out and uh, he worked with, um, you know, the Home Alone guy. Uh, uh, Macaulay Culkin. Mac- Mac- yeah. He, they were good friends, but Michael did a lot of like Touched by an Angel uh, things. That, you know, he, he and his mom went out there. She literally went out and lived with Michael in Burbank. And so, he, bottom line is, he stayed in the in- industry. Mm-hmm. So he, he he was immersed in the culture of mm-hmm. everything from video gaming, which he worked for a company there, to uh, you know still making and being in film. So he, with the knowledge that he had, and a really good writer, he uh, was able to put together, um, you know, um, I would say a treatment for the documentary. And yeah, we took it to family and friends, and there you have it. You know, yeah. had a doc. Yeah, like yeah. two years later. Well, and then everybody, you know, everybody's such a good sport about it. And I think, I, like, at what point, it sounds like going to that first screening must have been the point where you realized that it wasn't a, that it was a, a little that bit. That was a really, like, kind of great thing to be a part of. Like, at what point a little was bit. that? Okay. The, the big, the big, oh, oh, wow. The wow moment, which is in Best Worst Movie, the doc, doc is, mm-hmm. uh, my sister, who was living in Philadelphia at the time, she calls me and says, "George, you're not gonna believe it, but the Upright Citizens Brigade, uh, the, the Claudio Fragasso just won the uh, It Sucked Awards yeah. at, the, <laughs> at the Upright Citizens Brigade. Yeah, there. I didn't even know what the, that was, but of course, all the Saturday Night Live, uh, you know, are come from that. From yeah, the, you know, and it's a comedy club in, in New York. I I just cold called them and I just said, "Hey, I hear that Claudio, the the owner of uh, the um, the guys there were oh my god they, they went oh my god it's the dad from Troll 2 on the phone I, they, they said do you realize that everybody in the whole you know district here uh, my dog's gonna die you're crazy but the, the everybody in the district up here knows who you are yeah you know, you've got in New York City you gotta be kidding me on Broadway everybody <laughs> So uh, you're like an icon, they were saying. Yeah. Your character is, of course, and he was that. So anyway, uh, Michael and I said, look, why don't we, we ought to just do a doc around this thing. Yeah. So that was the first thing. The first time I ever saw Troll 2 in its entirety, because there are four, again, I was late in, yeah, to watch yeah. it, was it, it was in New York. Oh, okay. And that's when on the documentary it shows everybody came from right. all over. The, yeah. the whole United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was people that, that, that drove you know, across the country to see it. Was like, it was like unbelievable. That was the most... Un- it was 300 people was packed in there. And it was a sellout and everybody's... But then you... There's, had, I didn't realize there was that much time before you knew that it was this... Because so, yeah. that's when I discovered it was in college. Yeah. And that would have been 06, 07. You know, sure, so that yeah, was yeah, right yeah, yeah. At the, I, I don't even remember how I came across it. Well, that's um, when it started to really yeah. escalate. I don't, I don't know if somebody introduced it to me or if I found out about it online or what, but uh, it was one of those things that I would show to people and say, oh, you know, it was you a treasure. Yeah, you know, you've you got to watch it. And it's and to me, it's, it's, you know, part of it is laughing at how bad some of it is, but then other parts of it are just so fun. You can't the, believe the, it. The, yeah. the, the peeing on all the, the food yeah. and the, the fact that yeah. One of my favorite parts is the fact that he he's given uh, I think uh, uh, thirty seconds to stop y'all from eating, and he takes a solid ninety. <laughs> like there was no continuity. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I mean, it was. I just I loved all of that from the first time watching. So that's that's, that's great, yeah. and I I think it's great that everybody's such a good sport about it, and it's yeah. just kind of this fun thing. So you did that. That was a chapter, and you, you know, you're, you're a, a, a dentist in Alabama. Yeah. You do this this weird little movie. You forget about it. Then you find out it's this massive. It's the new Rocky Horror Picture Show. So you have that chapter, and then now you're in this new movie, Texas Cotton. Well, um, yeah, kind of, I mean, yeah, it's like from that to this. No, it really didn't happen. Okay, so yeah, let's talk yeah, about. Yeah. Let's I, talk yeah, about. I didn't feel you. I didn't even feel you in all that. Um, yeah. Before we started. Interview. Yeah, yeah, this is our, basically yeah. the first time we're talking. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, do, how do we go from I know. You're, you're now George Hardy, the dad from Troll 2, everybody right. knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what's, so now so that I start years. getting, I, yeah, over, yeah. well, it's more than that, really. I mean, from, well, yeah, after Best Worst Movie came out, then, of course, then I started yeah. getting phone calls. Yeah. You know, because, oh my gosh, there, there's the dad, he is, he is around. You know? Yeah. 
uh, I'd like to have him in my film. Right. The dad. So I get phone calls, start getting phone calls. And it was kind of tough because I didn't know, I didn't know how to take it. You know, yeah. Whether, you know, and so uh, I started doing some little things where people would come in my dental office with a green screen and I'd be a weatherman. Or I even was out in a, a motel room in my hometown and I played the evangelical uh, priest. Yeah, because I saw you've got a handful of IMDb Yeah, crafts. probably about 10 of them started yeah. happening. And then I did... Um, <clears throat> The biggest problem, the biggest one, everything was like a one-day shoot, but the, then I ended up going uh, to um, to Germany, and I filmed in Baden-Baden. There was another, there's another film being made, uh, what well, hasn't come out yet, it's called, okay. it's called Goblin 2, and I actually play the, the character. Yeah. And it's it's a takeoff spin, kind of, yeah. with the permission of Claudio Rossella, the director moved in and, and got them, did it, all Germans. So I was the only American with one check, and then there were probably twenty Germans to make this fantasy kind of, uh, yeah, her- truly like a uh, kind of a Harry Potterish, uh, along with, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I, it's just a big fantasy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, so, I saw some of the cover yeah. art for it, but there's not really a lot of information yeah, about it. Hard. Do you yeah, know yeah. what Whether the future still, of it is? The release is still, you know. Controvert when it's going to come out. Okay, but I might go over to Germany for that to see that. So I'm in about five scenes of that, and that kind of put me back in the camera where the the big not big studio, but yeah, where, you know where the lights, camera action deal, you know, yeah. rather than just a little one day shoot in front of it. Yeah. So, uh, but but what happened was in 2014, uh, I ended up getting a phone call. I think we filmed. I had just come back from Germany and filmed it and. Uh, in the summer of 2014, we filmed in Germany. I get a phone call from a fellow named Tyler Russell. And Tyler was making a film in Mobile, Alabama. And he called, and I, and he was telling me all about uh, 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 that he'd seen Best Worst Movie. Of course, he's a huge Troll 2 fan. Yeah. He loved Best Worst Movie. And he asked if I, and I could tell this guy, this is different from anybody I've ever talked to. Okay, because you had experience talking to people that just wanted to kind of throw you yeah, in Yeah, and it's just kind of, yeah. it's like, you know, just can I have you for a one-day shoot, yeah. man? It's like, you know, I don't know if I really want to spend the time or anything. Yeah, yeah. And everything was, you know, nobody's going to pay you for it, you know. Well, and you, got, I mean, and you got a full career. It's not like you're just yeah, waiting well, for movie yeah, really work. You know? Yeah, I've got, I've got to get to my dental practice, yeah. too. Although, I did go to Germany, and they, they, they were good, yeah. they treated me good there. But as far as Tyler calls me, and he says, uh, and I, and he says, I'm, I've got written a, a script, and he's, and he sent it to me, and he said, I'd like for you to come down and play, uh, uh, in retro scenes, about eight different, uh, uh, wardrobes where you're, you play the dad of the lead of the film. And so, uh, I, I took it for that day and went down to film with Tyler yeah. and I met him. And it was just, Fantastic working with him, and so he that that little film called Here Comes Rust. He got in the Sidewall Film Festival, which is a film festival in Birmingham, Alabama. It's a great film festival, and so Tyler's work got accepted. So Tyler flew in from Austin. He grew up in Monroe, but been making films since he was four four years old. Anyway, he uh, flew flew over to uh, to Birmingham, and and, and I. Picked him up and brought him down here and showed him all around Lake Martin, where I lived and all, because we've become friends from that. Took him out to <laughs> to a restaurant here in town, really nice one on the lake. And he says, here, I got something for you. Throws it down. He says, I got a script for you. And I go, what, Tyler? He goes, I think you'd be perfect for the lead in this film. And so, and again, he's already named it Texas Cotton. Yeah. He says, I think you would make the best sheriff there is in the film. So, for me, and so I ended up reading the script, fell asleep the first yeah. night because it was about 120 pages long. Yeah. Fell asleep over a glass of wine and got up next day. I said, Tyler, are you really serious? Are you, are you? And he said, I really mean, I think you can play the lead in this film. Why don't you really take it more serious, look at it really closely? So I started reading it. I really went through everything the best way I could. He said, Why don't we get together and let's do a short? So in the May of, I don't mean to get too wordy here, but bottom line is we did a short two-day filming. 
outside of Austin last May of 2017. And then we, with friends and family, we uh, were able to, um, and some interest uh, with others, um, put them together from the short, the full feature. Okay. And yeah. So Tyler pulled me in, and that's when it was, I was full on with it. And I was, it was like, oh, that was it. This is, I'm going to actually play a lead in the film. Now, that's fantastic. Well, I want to talk yeah. a lot more about yeah. that. Let's take a quick break, Let's and then do. we're going to talk about the movie and your role and just how it's so different from. From the troll thing, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievably uh, yes. different. Totally. So let's, we'll come right back and we'll talk more about that. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so we're back in Texas Cotton. Like I said at the beginning, I have the privilege of watching it. I just watched it two nights ago, I think. Um, stayed up late and watched it. <laughs> thank and you, um, thank you. really liked it a lot. So, you know, we're not going to give away any spoilers in this, but we can talk generally about your character and sort of what it's about. So, um, before I watched it, I had no idea what to expect. I just knew you were in this, this new movie that was making the rounds at the the festival that just premiered in Austin. Yeah, at the Austin Film um, Festival, yeah. And then uh, I, I watched the trailer, I'm like, hmm, because it looks like, even the color palette looks kind of like No Country for Old Men. There's that scene when you're on the payphone, you know, outside of the, I don't want to give too yeah. much away, but I mean, it looked like a shot from that movie, you know, I'm you're like, right. oh, okay, this, look, this looks interesting. And then it took another like maybe 10 minutes, because I, I didn't read up on it, I just started watching it. Another ten minutes of watching to go. Oh, this is a serious Texas crime thriller. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, how is this gonna play out? And it continued to play out well. And then you, I don't want to. I feel weird complimenting people too much face to face, but you did such a good job. And you're mm-hmm. you're sitting across the table from actors like Jerry Jones, Gene, or Gene, Gene Jones. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. And uh, and for people listening at home. Uh, Gene is he's been in a bunch of stuff yeah. but the thing you'd know him from his most iconic scene is the one in No Country for Old Men where he's sitting across the table from uh, Sugar Sugar Anton Sugar in the, the gas station or the, the roadside yeah. place and that was such a the coin toss scene the coin toss scene one of the most famous scenes and ever. then now you, here you are yeah, you know, one of the most famous scenes in movie history. Certainly yeah. the most famous scene in that movie. Yeah. And then now you're sitting across the table from him in multiple oh, scenes. Oh, yeah. As you say this to me, I got chills. Yeah, I, I really did. When I, I I'll let you kind of talk about the story, but I got chills seeing. So we talked forever about Troll. I discovered it in college, loved it. It's just this cool thing, and I I, I had seen the documentary, so I'm just I don't know you. We just met, but I'm aware that you're you're this dentist and you're a good sport about that that terrible movie and then now I'm watching you and you're in this movie yeah. where you're playing this pretty worn out sheriff mm-hmm. pretty tired uh, uh, sheriff and it was just such a there was there was a moment watching I don't remember exactly what it was but it was such kind of a beautiful thing to be able to see that you got to do something like that mm-hmm. all this time later I mean yeah. how how was that how was that for you. Well, yeah, we back up a little bit. And best yeah. worst maybe actually sitting right here at this table, right in that chair. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. This is so crazy. I'm sitting in that chair in Best Worst Movie, the documentary. And I was asked, what, George, what did you really want to do, if you remember that? So it was filmed right here. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> this takes place. But I said, you know, what I really did want to do is, is, is act. Okay. And, and if you, if you yeah. watch... Best worst movie the doc after Troll Two, and I just that was made in you know ten years ago. Yeah, so that doc. Did. And I just said I really always really would have had to. I, well, I just felt like I could do it. I don't. I don't really feel like I have to explain anything to anybody. It's just something I wanted to do. Yeah, it wasn't an ego thing. It's just something I just thought I could just do. It. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, when given the opportunity. You know, to play the lead in the film, I wasn't going to turn it down. Yeah, and I was in fifty six or fifty seven scenes in the in the film. Oh yeah, in, 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 in you know, in, in Texas Cotton. So it's basically like Nicholson in Chinatown. And yeah, I, I'm following. They're following me around the whole time, trying to figure what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, 
So the load on me was totally different than, you know, 30 years ago making Troll 2 or even being in a little cameo here or there with hardly any lines. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. even the thing I did in, you know, Germany. So this was a whole different animal. Yeah. And for me, uh, I had to, it was almost like going back to dental school because I can remember when I was in dental school, I'd have to, it, seriously, it would take sometimes four days to, to prepare for uh biochem exam or, you know, or, Gross anatomy, some of these big mm -hmm. didactic courses that we took, it would take four. It would take four days to study. This was something where I had about, a, I think I had two hundred fifty speaking parts, not yeah. lines, but two hundred fifty speaking parts, meaning whether or not it was one one word or several sentences yeah. so that I had to take on. So every day was a challenge. Of the twenty one day shoot, every of course every day was. So for me being not SAG, SAG members can only. Uh, if you're SAG, you can only, you know, you can only, you can only uh, be on set for ten hours. Yeah. For me, because yeah, there's no you. It was not. Yeah. <laughs> so I was a, it was a twelve to fourteen hours sometimes. Yeah. Not often. It was mostly. How how long was the shoot? Twenty one days. Twenty one days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, and Tyler put it together. He wrote the film and he just said, "Come on." So yeah. So believe it or not, to the audience listening, you think, "Well, how in the world?" were you able to take that much time off from your dental practice? And I, my parents had just passed away the, a, a couple of months before, 97 and 94, mom and dad did. And when that happened, I thought to myself, you know what, life's just too short. I've been I've been a dentist for 35, 37 years. I got I got to try something. Yeah, I, you know, before that, not too long from now, I'm in the last, you know, you know, Few years now, I, I hope, I hope, you know, yeah, I, I yeah, want to yeah. live past 100 if I can. But the bottom line is, I just thought, you know what, I'm this is crazy. So, I have a really good friend of mine, Dr. Karen McCaffrey, came in and she's a periodontist and in Alabama. You have to have a dentist present to see patients, so even hygiene. So, she she helped me out, and, and I took off six weeks, wow. and I did it. You know, I just, I, I seriously, Darren, I just, I just dove in there and I just said, you know, I gotta make it work. So, that's what happened. Well, and in, in that process, so one thing I was real curious about, like, uh, in, in, in before meeting you, like in Best Worst Movie, the five, first five minutes of that just talks about how nice of a guy you are. <laughs> that's all that movie does for the first five minutes. That's the I intro. think it's just too much. But that's the intro to that movie. And then talking to you, not only are you a super nice guy, but a lot of energy. But the, your character, like I said, is really tired. Yeah. The, yeah, you, you, know, you don't want to uh, spoil it, but yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally, it's a, it's a serious acting role, and I knew it. Uh, and and uh, the, the the what's kind of interesting that misled a lot of people is our our, um, our our short is totally different. Okay. Than the feature, as far if, so if you're watching the short, you're thinking this is going to be kind of slapstick comedy. Oh, okay. And, and which we were kind of having fun. There were some things that had happened. It rained three three inches that night before, and we were doing it all in bed. Yeah. It, it's a great little short, by the way. Yeah, is it, is it available to watch? Yeah, I don't know yet. If, it might get out there. If, if it's available, if there's anywhere online people can watch it, I'll put a link in the Not description. Not yet. Tyler okay. hasn't released it yet, but it yeah. did really well at okay. the festival. But, uh, yeah, and, and so it was my first taste of, of really being back in. And I was so fortunate because I worked with uh, I worked with Judd Lorman in the short, and Judd is on SEAL team now. He's a regular on SEAL. And Judd is an incredible actor, and he helped me so much, uh, kind of break back, break the ice again. Yeah, he was coaching me as we were, you know, having one-on-one -on -one scenes together. When this camera wasn't on us, he said, you know, uh, he would say, if you don't have any lines, just think the line. He would keep telling me, think the line, think of what you would say, so that 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 look comes out on your face. Yeah. And that was great. That was great advice. Okay. And and uh, so and Judge worked with greats from Cruz to De Niro. He's worked with all. And uh, so um, and y'all would know who Judd is now because he's you know on Seal Tomb. But then um, and then Mark Brassard was a, a, a real interesting fellow to work with as well. It, it's, that was in the short. But then fast forward, Tyler Russell, who's an incredible connector, and I think he's I honestly I think child. Tyler's a prodigy. I mean, he's extremely talented. Um, he is a connector. He like you, you know, around your age, and just a go getter, and truly has the personality to 
or talk to anyone from four years old to 94. He just got a great personality. And I knew it. And I, and I said, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to follow his lead. And he's an incredible director. He brought an incredible group of people. I use the word, that word over and over because it's true. He brought in a huge group of uh, talent from the Austin area. Yeah, and like yeah. what? So, and, and just talking more about your character, like, was yeah. was it? Did Tyler have like a vision for how he wanted your character to be? Oh and then yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. try to work with you to figure out how to find that, or did you sort of? No, no, that? Tyler knew. Yeah. He did, and I. He coached me throughout, and as I said, when we did that first re- reading uh, down here on the, uh, on the lake, at, at, when it was at the Sawa Film Festival, I read it for the first time. I couldn't get a grasp of what aging lawman was. And mm-hmm. At the end, of, he 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 wanted me to play me. He just don't don't not do your acts, you know. Just be just, just, just play you, but. Um, but he, he set up the context for how yeah. he wanted the character to be, and so yeah. I and what's really great about it for me, Darren, more than anything, is uh, I did five days by myself uh, of the twenty-one days. She the first five days was was uh, any other actors. Company. Okay. So it helped me get back used to being in the camera. Yeah, got you being acclimated. filmed for eight yeah. or ten hours each day, and then I just had a blast there. But then, <laughs> so I I started to start to feel who. Travis Delmore was as far as the character goes. So then, then went on my first big, my first big day of shooting uh, with somebody was with Gene. Yeah, and it was at the sit down table, which is at the at the dinner table. And I think I, yeah. I don't mean to brag at all when I say this, but I think when people see Texas Cotton in the future, when they do, when the when it is critiqued, or, I think people will say that's a pretty damn good looking scene. It just I, is powerful. I'll it's agree, crazy. and so, with again, without really spoiling anything, yeah. there was there were things with his performance that did a great job of tricking you into thinking something else was going on. Yeah. That it, he did a great job with yes. that. That almost had to retroactively go. Oh no, the way he said it could have gone either way. Yeah, and he did great with that. Oh. And I thought that that was I, I was yeah. impressed with you, Keith, because he he's there's another movie where he plays like a. a I mean, he's in a bunch of stuff, but he plays like a cult leader. That's like a oh yeah, uh, Sacrament. The, the yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's sort of the it's, it's Jonestown, isn't yeah. it? The, yes, the, yes, the, yeah. Uh, fictional retelling of that, yeah. and uh, I brilliant. mean, he's a powerhouse he's guy, and, yeah. and you you were were right across the table from him a couple to, of times, yeah. which I thought was great. They really had to look at him in the eye. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, well, and then the the first time you're on camera with him, I was like, all right, let's see how this is gonna go. Yeah, and I think it played out really yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So that's exciting. Thank uh, you I, for saying I, uh, that. So much. Yeah, and 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 I say it as someone who is a uh, a, a fan of the genre, mm-hmm. the the neo noir, you know, detective, and yeah. specifically the Texas setting. I like a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think this is this is a good one. I'm excited to see Thank what happens so with much. it. Yeah. So w- what's what's currently happening with the movie now, and when's it going to be available? Yeah. Oh, great. I'm glad you asked. So what what we just did was you just came off the Austin Film Festival, and a really nice review I just read. I was very honored by the review, and uh, it it the, because Austin Film Festival is also a screenwriters festival, and so the incredible, brilliant minds there. So many talented people. I mean, you have to give credit to the screenwriters. I mean, they're the ones that really create the whole film from the get go. Yeah. And so uh, it was an honor to meet so many there. But they showed it uh, twice, and it just got great applause at the end. And uh, what an honor that that was. So uh, the bottom line is, uh, so uh, was that well? First, was that your first time seeing it with an audience? Yes. Yeah, it was. Now I had seen the film, you know, just in raw. Now, yeah. Without. The color correction and without a lot of soundtrack, so uh, yeah, it was yeah. Well, and great that's why I ask because sure. well, and that's why I ask because seeing it with an audience is a different. It got to be absolutely just a special yeah, experience. Yeah, yes, it was the first uh, the first time we the world premiere was in a studio uh, setting, and then the second was in an actual theater. Okay, of which we'll be taking off. So that was last weekend, and this coming weekend. Uh, so it's a two week break. We start our festival on it, which is really great. And so uh, we're going to be in San Antonio at the beautiful Tobin Center at the uh, Chavez Studio, another studio, 
But this this building was renovated a couple four years ago for two hundred twenty million dollars. Yeah. So it's it's great. So uh, we were lining the we were lining the theater up the theaters up and <laughs> it was really kind of cool. I just made a cold call to him trying to see if we could get in. The guy goes for what year? And you know, like we don't. I'm sorry, but there's over five hundred events in this little room you're talking about every year. Yeah. Just so happens that on November the tenth, which is what is coming up this weekend, is when we'll premiere uh, there, and uh, we, we it opened up for us. Oh wow! So what's neat about it is uh, quite a bit of, as you saw, uh, the movie is filmed in San Antonio mm-hmm. as well. The little town of Cost is Texas, which is fictional, but the actual town of Cost is where we filmed it. Uh, the um, Sorry about that. That's all right. Just, just, the b- bottom line is uh, uh, the the bottom line is uh, what what's true is we're going to show it there and then we take off and go to Hondo, Texas. Okay. But oh, San Antonio, the mayor is coming to introduce the film, which is really cool. Yeah. And the city clerk's going to be there. She's in the film, so we've got the city of San Antonio, what the, what, the eighth largest city in the United States, yeah. coming, and then we take off to Hondo. Which is really close because it was filmed uh, close to San Antonio. It's filmed there. The court, courtroom scene is there. Yeah. Then we go down to Houston. The film commission down there is behind the film. And then we head up to Dallas at the Texas Theater. Yeah. yeah. That's good to be able to yeah, go, you around can go around Texas. Around line and see Texas. Where see, yeah, I'll put links to all of this in oh, the good. description. Yeah, thank you. On, uh, on YouTube mm-hmm. so people can track it down and sure. see where they can, they can find it. And then it'll eventually be available where people can watch it at home. Pretty soon. So yeah, so we're gonna actually go out to Los Angeles and have a six day run out there. Oh wow. And when that happens on the sixteenth of November is when it actually goes and we'll stream it on Amazon. Okay. So of you listeners that can't, you know, go to any of these that you might see online that you yeah. if you're posting, we'd love it if you could come to the screening. If yeah. You, any of you listeners out there you could come to the screening. If not, you can stream it on Amazon. Well, and it's one of those movies that's you know, it's fun to see in a uh, either a festival environment or a special screening environment, which is basically the same. Yeah. You know, a special screening, in my experience, <laughs> it's not like a festival because it's not people all over the place, but the audience is the same. You're dealing with people that want to be there, that are really excited to see this particular film, and it's a much more, there's a better energy. There's not people playing on their phones. There's not people shaking popcorn, really. Right. Um, I went to a special screening of something last night, and it's just a better, it's it a is. better way to watch it something. It really is. It's it really be- is. way better than watching it at home. So if you happen to be near uh, any kind of special screening of this movie, or really any time you get a chance to jump on that at a, at, a, at a theater that does that type of stuff, I can't recommend doing that enough. It's it's a very very really different right. experience than just going to the you know the Cinemark. I don't want to. I probably shouldn't say a brand name, but just going to the giant Cineplex and sitting in with all the people that just wanted to go see a movie that night. It's very different, you know, yeah. to do that. Yeah. So um, Yeah, when it's created like an event of which is what we're yeah. trying to do with some of these screenings. But some of them will be just uh, out there, you know, having a good time. I get to go to Portland on the twenty third. My daughter lives there, so that'll be nice the day after Thanksgiving and watching her Okay, so there's gonna be so even after the sixteenth there's <laughs> continued days. Yeah. So and, yeah, and we'll put are, all of those Well actually Hamburg Germany's interested. Uh, Ottawa, Canada, it will be uh, shown there. So, you know, we'd love to get up in New York and Chicago. If anybody yeah. could, could help us, uh, they could maybe contact um, Travis Ayers, which you can put up on the screen. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have him give me whatever contact info he wants yeah. to have in the description. But, uh, you know, people can track down this movie. But uh, I, yeah, I do yeah. recommend it. And I, so. I would say... There's a handful of people that'll, and I, I, I'll be doing a review on the main Flick Connection channel on the movie closer to its uh, streaming release, and then um, what, what, basically what I, what I would say is any anybody that's a diehard Troll Two fan needs to see the movie because it's just so cool to see you doing this different thing now. But in addition to that. Anybody that likes, you know, that like I said, those those sort of Texas crime movies, uh, No Country for Old Men comes to mind. Uh, Hell or High Water is a recent one I've really liked. Um, if you like those kind of movies, Chinatown, of you, yeah, you'll 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 dig this one. And then um, Fargo is another one. In yeah, There Will Be Blood. Yeah, it's, it's kind similar. Of it's it, it's just kind of a, a, a it's a it's a it's kind of a quiet thriller type of a thing, mm-hmm. similar to Fargo. 
Um, I, I and, loved and, also working with. I, I, mean, I, yeah, Luke, I love working with Lou Temple. Uh, Lou's in so many films. I don't know. You don't Lou or not? Was Lou? Him. Lou is the sprayer. Yes. Yes. And so yes. The Walking Dead. Uh, also Jason Douglas. So mm-hmm. Lou and Jason are both Walking yeah. Dead actors. So for those of you that love Walking Dead, well, and Lou, Lou's been yeah. in a ton of stuff, and, yeah. and Jason was really good in it because in Walking Dead he's uh, kind of an ancillary peripheral character. Right, right. He's in an episode every now and then. Yeah, right. He's kind of a uh, kind of a not a he's kind of an ordinary yeah. guy, and in, in this movie he's not an ordinary no, guy he's at not. all. He's a, he's full <laughs> of, and then of course Tiffany Shepherd, so she's been in Hunt. She's called the Scream Scream Queen. Yeah, and not so, a horror and, film. Crazy thing Lovers. about her Love is, her. so I screened uh, Texas Cotton one night, and then the next night I watched another movie uh, uh, called Killer Kate, uh, like a horror yeah. movie. Yeah, oh, you got to see Tiffany. Yeah, and she was in it. She yes. was in it both nights, and I had yeah, no yeah, idea. Yeah. So, oh, she's a great um, actress. Yeah. I, I just respect her work so much. She's she's a go-getter, and she's been, Tiffany's, you know, she really wanted to do, she's been in film. She doesn't look it. There's no way you would think it. But she's been in, in film for 20 years. Now. Yeah, I checked out her so, IMDb. Yeah, she's, she's got, got a long, a long uh, uh, yeah. history. She does. Yeah. She's a wonderful mom. A lot of experience. She's a great mom. And her husband's doing very well as a screenwriter in Los Angeles now. And just a joy to work with. And uh, she grew up in New York. So she's got that spunk about it. That yeah. New York, you know. But no, all the all, who Tyler picked, really, even some of the uh, people like myself that are uh, not acting, some, uh, there's just um, all the others that are yeah. in there. Are, 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 it's so well cast. No, it was really well cast. I thought it was really well written. And then there were multiple occasions in it. You know, for the most part, in my experience, if a movie's really well directed, you don't, kind of don't notice it. Yeah. You don't notice the director. But You're there right. were a couple of moments where I went, oh, he, he he's I like, I like, oh, I know what he's doing. And I, it was like a couple little you. smart. You watch a lot of directors. I watched maybe yeah. too many. Uh, okay, uh, I'm glad because <laughs> I'm glad somebody like you are saying this yeah. because there were four writers on the. There were actually four people. Check, okay, there were four people actually checking in on each other. All, they were cross checking all the time. So what would happen when we were making Texas Cotton? Uh, we wanted to make it flow and really make a lot of sense for the viewer, so that they, you know, you can. You, a lot of times you can go to a movie and you say, what just happened. But this is the kind of film that you want to wake up the next morning and think about. Go, yeah. Wow. Did that? Whoa. You, you know. I, oh yeah. But because it We're, all makes sense. Things loop back together. It does. In nice ways. Yeah. yeah. I, I won't say anything more than yeah, that. Yeah. It's but, pretty much a shock. Um, but uh, but just such yeah. a cool thing to be able to do. And such I asked, a polar opposite yeah. type of a thing, which is what I thought was so special. About it. Well, I knew that there was magic in the film when uh, when Gene Jones got. Got out of the yeah. car. I was already there shooting for five days, like I said. And Gene comes in, and he gets out of the car. I met him, never met the guy. And I said, I just interjected and said, Gene, I got to ask you something. What made you? You're, you're, you know, Tarantino loves him. You know, yeah. he's in all of his films, and uh, he's just in Redford's film, uh, the, the the man, the, the old man yeah. in the gun. Yeah. So I asked Gene. I said, Gene. Why did you do this film? I mean, a, a little film like this, you know, a little indie. Why would you do this? Come on, <laughs> how did this happen? And he says, I, he says, I'm just going to tell you, it was such a. <laughs> he goes, it's such a tight script. He says, I just oh, love, wow. I love the script. It's tight. There's no sex, and there's no, you know, there's no bad stuff. You know, like it's a good, yeah, clean film. It just made sense, and he is truly. I respect him so much as a, not only as an actor, as a person, but when he said that, I thought, whoa, what an honor. I am so honored to be a part of this film now. Not not that I was questioning yeah, it, yeah. but even more so. No, it, that, it that definitely would have elevated it. At being a nice actor. Elevated. It. And, uh, it, and I, it's true. It does not really, thinking back on it, there's not really any fat on it. You, you know, unfortunately, like, like it annoys my wife when we go see a movie. If I like a movie... Sometimes I'll on the ride home I'll only comment on the things I didn't like because I I like everything, but I would have changed this or they could have done that. But like I'll I'll do that and there's not there's not really like fat nice. on the movie. You yeah, know, yeah, it yeah. is tight. It, it well, is it, it there yeah. there wasn't like a scene 
that I would say, well, I don't know that they needed to do that, or that was maybe a little too long, you know. Well, Tyler wanted my character to be, be believable. Well, all of us. Yeah. Extremely believable. And I think that it was a great feat in front of him to, to prove to the audience listening on this. And throughout the whole film, all of us, uh, when I was working, I kept, I kept thinking, uh, what, for me, and I think most of the, uh, all of us were so concerned about how the audience would, uh, you know, yeah, uh, accept this part of the film or whatever. You wanted it to make sense, you know. But, uh, but Tyler has this incredible mind uh, that he threw together this picture that really has worked. Yeah. So I can't wait for people to watch it. I mean, yeah. I no, that's that's going to be. And you, you, you're, you're, you've you seen it with an audience. You, you've only seen one review so far. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just now starting to peek its head out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're right. getting ready to Thank see you. like a full on reception. I hope it, so. You know, you know I can't say all of them will be good. You know, you never know. But I will say this. Well, they never I, are. I've got several people, yeah, exactly, that <clears> come in and get me pretty good, I'm sure, all of us. But um, I had the biggest compliment was uh, uh, several people came to two, two or three of the show and so far to do mm-hmm. and they go I could just watch this over and over again I, I want to watch it again because each time you watch it you, it's one of those things you learn more and more about well and I, I watch I told you because I, I, I've got so many I, I watch now just to maintain this channel like my wife is going to bed I was like I gotta watch I gotta, I gotta stay up and watch this movie so I watched it after she was in bed but I, I think we'll go back and watch it again oh do uh, do you know and even the soundtrack just, yeah. it, it'll even stick in your mind even more so. yeah Sam Littman from Australia, uh, uh, he's, we had a connection with Austin Symphony Orchestra, and, and Sam came in, and Tyler absolutely wanted no synthesized sounds. He had yep. all orchestral sounds, and then we also brought in Coulter Wall, he's up and coming. Oh, he's got I'm, I'm a big fan of oh, him. Yeah. He's phenomenal. He's in the, you know. And, uh, and then, uh, actually, the, the really cool thing is uh, one of my, um, um, we had a, another song from a very famous artist that we couldn't use. So we brought in one of my local uh, uh, high school buddies. Well, I'm a little older than him, but he would actually perform right here in this room with my mother who played by ear, and his name's Bobby Luster, and he lives out in West Texas now. And so Bobby pulled in one of his originals at the very end of the movie. It was uh, phenomenal. It's where was great. Coulter Wall uh, inserted? Well, they all came in. Coulter, uh, you remember? I think the ballroom scene. I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I, think, I, can't, I might have been paying too much attention to that, so I'll go back and listen. I, I'll be able to pick it out because I am a fan of it. I've been trying to see. Well, maybe one of I, he top, comes top to Atlanta stuff. every now and then, and I oh. always miss it. And but, I've always got something else going on, but I do plan to see him. He's one of yeah. my favorite uh, and, uh, up and comers. Yellow Dog Studios pulled in, yeah. and pulled us together on that. And, uh, that was really cool. Yeah. They helped us with about seven or eight art, six artists. So there should be a soundtrack coming up. No, that's great. Uh, yeah. yeah, the first in the first scene, uh, the movie, uh, Bo helped us pull that together, and uh, he uh, pulled the group together with uh, folks out at Yellow Dog. Yeah, and, so, and Tyler's a little bit of a musician too, so it was really great working with. Yeah, I need to go back and pay a little more attention to the music. I yeah. think I was a little more focused on uh, just scrutinizing you yeah and, uh just seeing how everything kind of played I out i appreciate so, you watching so close yeah too. yeah no i know i did i i i tried to you know mess around on my phone or do well, you're lucky to stuff, get it so. early because it's about yeah. to take off now no, i'm i'm excited about it um it was great having you on what a pleasure to talk a real about pleasure both. to yeah. yeah to talk I with you history. um hopefully people find the, the old story's interesting yeah. and they they check out this new movie um uh, but i'll be i'll yeah. be talking about it more on the main uh, sure. Fort Connection channel. But if you only listen uh, to the podcast, uh, look for Texas Cotton uh, You know, on Instagram. I'll be sharing out on Flick Connection. I'll be sharing out uh, the, the dates that it'll be in theaters, but you can go to the website and find it, or uh, eventually it will be available on Amazon. So just look for Texas Cotton there as yeah, well. Yeah, you but, can. Uh, and I got to get back to my dental practice. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but no, I think um something might come up. Maybe, yeah, you know, I hope so. More, I hope you get to at least kind it's of dabble fun. with it and have some fun with it. You know. Yeah. So again, it was a real pleasure Gosh, meeting you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank really. you so much for talking with me. What a great. I'm, Go see Texas Cotton or yep. listen to it. All right, and uh, we'll, we'll keep making Amazon. we'll keep making shows like this as long as you keep listening to them. But thanks for checking this one out, and you will hear us on the next one.